from Chicago, we invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring J. Carol Nash. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write her and tell her about his adventures. So now we look over Luigi's shoulder as he writes another letter to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, how you like the news from England? Princess Elizabeth, she have a little boy. So now England, she's a really a mother country. In the last letter, you say you're surprised that my English writing is so good. I can explain to you why. First thing, when I come to Chicago, I go to night school at night. <laughs> I wish you, Mamma Mia, you could see my teacher, Miss Spaulding. She's got the beautiful eyes like a Mediterranean. Her hair is gold like a sun over Alps. And her shape. <laughs> Mamma Mia, if Italy is in such a good shape, they don't need a Marshall plan. <laughs> So you see, Mamma Mia, I'm studying very hard because I don't want to be like our countryman Pasquale who bring me here. <laughs> he is here 26 years, and all he knows is the two words, money and rosa. <laughs> it's too bad that she is not worth her weight in gold. She's so fat, Mamma Mia, that if a fella marries her, he is a commit to bigamy. <laughs> But this morning, I'm not thinking about the Pasquale Rosa. I'm talking to my 12-year-old general manager, Jimmy O'Connor, who is like my son. And I'm helping him with his lessons before he goes to school. I say to him, what are you doing, Jimmy? An algebra problem. It's pretty tough, too. Stop looking for the answer in the back of the book. Is it not honest? Read me the question, and I give you the answer. But is it honest if you figure out the answer for me? Don't worry, I won't. <laughs> But I try. It's all common sense. Now, read me question. Okay. If Tom can dig a ditch in two hours, and Harry can dig the same ditch in one hour, how long would it take Tom and Harry if they dig together? Oh. What answer it gives in the back of the book? <laughs> and you told me not to look. That's right. We use the common sense. If Harry... Digs a hole in two hours uh, No, Tom digs the hole in two hours The same thing Later they're going to dig the hole together So it makes no difference <laughs> Well, never mind, boss I'll figure it out in school Never put off a Jimmy Is a bad habit We figure out to by common sense Tom digs hole in two hours Harry digs the same hole in one hour Right How long would it take Tom and Harry If they dig together? <laughs> it's a funny thing What's funny? Just two weeks ago was election Harry stands still and Tom digs his own hole. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. Maybe it's a little hard to figure out the by common sense. Oh, that's okay, Mr. Luigi. You help me with my American history. It's my favorite subject. Jimmy, you're a lucky boy you're born here. Boss, do you really wish you were born in America? Yes. And next time I'm born, I know better. <laughs> Jimmy is getting late You better go in the back Have a glass of milk And go to school Okay Well, I think I dust off my antiques No, better I put dust on antiques Makes them look older <laughs> Hello, Mr. Luigi Good morning, my teacher, Miss Spaulding It's a big pleasure to see you I was on my way to school So I thought I'd drop in for a minute It's a wonderful idea Look how whole place light up Because you're here Please Sit down on this Teddy Roosevelt rocking chair. Why do you call it a Teddy Roosevelt rocking chair? It has no arms and it's rather hard. Teddy Roosevelt was a rough rider. <laughs> well, I'll take this chair. It seems more comfortable. Fine. He's also a good chair. American mahogany, Duncan Five style. Good. Then I can be patriotic and comfortable at the same time. Is uh, it all right if I sit next to you? Well, certainly it's all right. Thank you. How's the business, Miss Spaulding? Well, teaching school can hardly be called a business 
But it must be a wonderful thing to be teacher. Everybody, they love you. They respect you. I bet you all the kids in your class, they're crazy about you. Yes, but they have a quaint way of showing it. What do you mean? Well, Mr. Basco, did you ever spend a day dodging spitballs? Or did you ever shake hands with a piece of bubble gum? Or were you ever hit by a jet-propelled eraser? Miss Spalding, your life! She's in danger. <laughs> well, it's not as serious as that, Mr. Basco. Well, if the kids do bad things, you tell me, Miss Spalding. I teach them respect. Oh, no, Mr. Luigi. We don't use force. Then how you punish them? Well, occasionally we keep them after school. Miss Spalding, do me a favor. Please punish me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> ah, now, that's the better. Don't be sad no more. All you need, Miss Spalding, is the same thing everybody needs. Somebody who say nice things. Especially if somebody is a nicer fella. If I'm a ten years younger. Miss Spalding, and if I have a big store like a Marshall and Fields, then I buy you the whole store and the school and I give you for Christmas a present. Then I go there every day and I hold your hand like this and I say, Good morning, my beautiful teacher, Miss Spalding. Mr. Luigi, I could kiss you for that. Boss, I finished my milk. Jimmy, go back and drink two more quarts. <laughs> You are here, Miss Spaulding. Yes, yes, uh, so I am. I, I, I just dropped in. In fact, I'm leaving. Uh, that's right. We'll walk to school together, Mr. Luigi. I, I mean, Jimmy. <laughs> sure. Goodbye, my teacher, Miss Spaulding. Goodbye, Mr. Luigi. Will I see you this afternoon? You see me any time you like, Miss Spaulding. I mean, at the PTA meeting. PTA? Are you on a relief, Miss Spaulding? <laughs> no, PTA means Parent Teachers Association. Didn't you give Mr. Luigi one of those notices, Jimmy? Uh, I forgot. Why you forget such a thing, Jimmy? Should I go, Miss Spaulding? But, boss, it's... It's mostly mothers. So what? I'm like a mother to you, Jimmy. Miss Spaulding, is it true that is all the mothers at the PTA? Well, the odds are that you'll be the only man among 30 or 40 ladies. That's a wonderful odds. <laughs> well, I, I, I dust my statues. See you this afternoon at the meeting. Jimmy, why didn't you tell Mr. Luigi about the PTA meeting? I just told you. I forgot. You're not ashamed of him, are you, Jimmy? No, of course not. It's only that... That what? Oh, nothing, Miss Balling. You better tell me, Jimmy. Well, it's just that you don't know Mr. Luigi like I do. What do you mean? If there's more than two people around, he thinks it's his duty to make a speech. That isn't true, Jimmy. Oh, yes, it is. At the July 4th ball game between our scout teams, he made us stop the game so he could read the preamble to the Constitution. And this was with three men on base. I think that's very commendable. And you should hear those speeches he makes to the statues. Yesterday, I heard him talk to the statue of Patrick Henry all about liberty and death. At the end of an hour, I swear I heard Patrick Henry say, Give me death! <laughs> Well, I'm sure no such thing will happen this afternoon. Don't be too sure, Miss Balling. He's so good-natured and he's so happy to be invited someplace that he'll wind up serving the food, making a speech, taking tickets at the door, and finding out if the people are related to the signers of the Declaration of Independence. I just don't believe it, Jimmy. Mr. Luigi just wants to participate in civic activity. He wants to feel that he belongs. The PTA meeting this afternoon will help round him out. Sure. And flatten out everyone else. <laughs> Luigi, my friend Hello, Luigi, hello, hello <laughs> Hello, Pasquale I come over to ask you a little favor Sure, everybody who comes to my spaghetti palace They call it a favor at the plate What do you want? I have to go to Jimmy's school this afternoon What's the matter, the kid in the trouble? No, I must make a speech Then the whole school's in the trouble <laughs> What the fuck you want to make a speech? You don't understand, Pasquale. Is Parent Teachers Association. That's the matter. You crazy. In the first place, you know parent. In the second place, you know teach. Then I must be association. <laughs> <laughs> you go too many places, Luigi. Always a running like a little mouse. <laughs> Stay home. Mind your own business. Is it my business what happened in school? Who asked you to make the speech, Jimmy? No. Mrs. Spaulding? No, it's my own idea. <laughs> you gonna make a speech? 
<laughs> well, what's this so funny? Listen, Luigi. Right now, everything she's a finer between the United States and Italy. You make a speech, and the whole war starts up again. <laughs> Please, keep your mouth shut. Is a free speech in the United States, and so I speak. In the second place, Luigi, this meeting is for ladies, not for men. What for you go? Maybe I meet the nice American lady. It's only mothers to go, not the single ladies. So is maybe nice widow lady. Widow lady? What's the matter with my daughter Rosa? She's not a widow. <laughs> you marry her now, we see what happens later. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm not the coming to talk about Rosa. Luigi, my friend, why you don't want to marry my Rosa? Just because she's a little bit chubby? Little bit. <laughs> Mamma mia, if I marry Rosa, it's not a marriage, it's a project. <laughs> but no more talk about Rosa. All right, all right. We don't talk about a Rosa. Thank you, Pasquale. Luigi, uh, is it not the parent that teaches a meeting for children's mothers? Maybe. But uh, Jimmy, he was born 12 years ago. He has no mother. Rosa could be his mother. She's 12 years too late. <laughs> then what do you want from me? When I go to meeting, please take care of my store. All right, all right. I send a Rosa. Oh, no. Is it like a bull in China shop? Never mind. I close a place. I put out sign to help you yourself. Goodbye, Pasquale. Hey, 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 hey. Wait, wait, Luigi. You gonna go to a PTA meeting like this? What's wrong? What's wrong? Look at the way you look. Look at your suit. You're the only fellow in the Chicago who's wearing a greener jacket with a six buttons in the front and a belt in the back. <laughs> and look at your pants. Where's the crease? Only bumps. <laughs> That's uh, from uh, keeping a pants under a mattress. I don't have other suits. Then uh, stay home. Why you must always uh, go places? Maybe you're right, Pasquale. Maybe I should have buy a new suit. But I don't got the money. Pasquale. No, I only lend money to son-in-law. <laughs> That's the trouble. Whenever you lend the money, it's got a strings attached. Ross's apron strings. All right, go ahead. Go to meet and let the fine American ladies laugh for Luigi Bosco. Sure, even a Jim is ashamed of you. Is it not true? Jim is no ashamed. Then why Miss Spalding invite you, not the Jim? Jimmy, forget, that's why. Sure, sure. Well, don't bother me. I'm not lending you no money. Only suit I buy you is a wedding suit. <laughs> what do you say, my son? Well, goodbye, Papa. <laughs> Excuse me, is this place you sell suits? Yes. You have suits here for speech making? Oh, yes, indeedy. Just had a shipment returned from the Republican National Committee. <laughs> good. Show me suit that's good for speech making. Oh, uh, you want something entailed? I'm going to make a speech and not hang it from three. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, well, will you give me some idea? Do you like this suit I'm wearing? If I take your suit, then you'll have to go home in underwear. <laughs> no, what I mean is, do you like this pattern? It's a herringbone. Herringbone? That's right. Is a fine country where they make suits from herringbone. <laughs> Must take a lot of little herring. <laughs> <laughs> I've never counted them. <laughs> perhaps you'd like, uh, perhaps you'd like a businessman's suit. You mean he lent me his suit? I like my own, please. Uh, well, sir, for what purpose do you want this suit? I have to make a speech at PTA meeting this afternoon. Maybe you like to come. Oh, no, thank you. I couldn't stand the excitement. <laughs> uh, tell me, is it formal or informal? It's inside in school. <laughs> no, no, I, I mean, do you have to dress? I'm only man there. Of course I got to dress. <laughs> this is PTA meeting, not Turkish bath. Oh, sir, could you go for this suit? It comes with two pairs of pants. Is it no good? Uh, I know, two pairs of pants would make your legs look too lumpy. <laughs> then why you try to sell it to me? Because I'm just a great big sneak. <laughs> oh, this is a nice suit here, this is a brown one. But why is pants so short? Because it's a Boy Scout suit, and you get a knife with it. How many blades? I can't tell you, it's a military secret. <laughs> look, please. I like a suit for making speech. You know, four score and seven years ago, of course.
course, well, why didn't you say so? Here's just the suit for you. It's our Gettysburg Address model. Is it good enough for Abe Lincoln? Is it good enough for Luigi Pasco? I take it. For the second act of Luigi Basco's Adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. So, Mamma Mia, I buy myself suit for PTA meeting. Now all I have to do is pay 50 cents a week. In one year, I own a coat. In one more year, I also own a pant. Pants is striped, and the coat is empty in the front, but in the back it sweeps the floor. <laughs> it's called a cutaway. This is what I do when I come home after meeting because there's enough of material in the back of coat for extra pair of pants. I also want to bring a present to ladies at the meeting, so I take a new thing called a money order that I get from lady customer and I go to post office to cash it. Excuse me, you the postmaster? Yes, I'm in charge of this branch. You're just the man I want to see. I just received this paper from a lady. That's a money order. See, fellow who worked for you in gray suits, he tell me if I bring it here, you give me $10. Is this right? Yes, yes. Uh, have you any identification? What do you mean? Well, something to prove you're Luigi Basco. Have you a driver's license? I don't even have a car. Citizenship papers? I know all the answers to questions, but I must wait a couple of years because... I... Marriage license? I'm single. If you know a nicer girl, I... Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How about a birth certificate? Is home in the family Bible. Could you bring that? Can't afford to take a trip to Italy just now. <laughs> If I get money order for $1,000, then I go and I bring, but for $10, it's... Hmm. Well, uh, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to show me something. Well, if, uh, if uh, nobody looks, uh, I show birthmark on the ankle. No, 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 that won't do. Isn't there some way you can prove that you're Luigi Basco? Mr. Postmaster, every morning when I get up, I look in the mirror, there I am. <laughs> but Mr. Basco, the it's rule... It's very simple. I prove the whole thing. Are you Luigi Basco? Certainly not. That the man over there on the line, is he Luigi Basco? Probably not. And the lady over there, is she Luigi Basco? I doubt it. Then is it left only you and me? <laughs> are you Luigi Basco? No. Then who are you talking to? I don't know. I'm surprised you don't know me, Mr. Postmaster. But why should I know you? Because all the time I'm in this country, this post office handles all the letters I send. Well, well I give up. You're Luigi Basco. Sure, I told you that first. You save a lot of time by not arguing with me. <laughs> I'll never do it again. Here's your $10. And I'm sorry I ever took a civil service examination. <laughs> Don't feel badly. From now on, I buy all the stamps from this post office. Goodbye. <laughs> America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From Hello, Pasquale. What do you want now, Luigi? More favor? This time I do you a favor. It's about the time. You do me a favor, I do you a favor. Like Uncle Pietro say, if one hand is dirty, wash your both hands. Please, don't bring your relations into this conversation. <laughs> I'm a busy. Pasquale, how much you charge you for spaghetti? With or without the meatball? Without. Cost them more without the meatball. <laughs> 65 cents a plate. Not to buy plate. How much you charge it by inch? What, are you crazy? I never sell it by inch. Then maybe you sell it by foot. No, no. Smallest I sell is a yard. How much is a yard? For you, 10 cents. Then how much I get for $10? I think maybe you get a half a mile. <laughs> Let me see. Is it 10 cents a yard? Is it 10 yards for $1? See? Ten dollars, you get a hundred yards. Okay, give me a hundred yards of spaghetti. What do you mean to give? No money, no spaghetti. Maybe I open a charge account with you. Uh, you give me ten dollars a box of cash your money, then you open a charge account. <laughs> All right, here is a ten dollars. Hey, where you get this? Post office. Since when is the post office giving away money? It's a new thing. <laughs> Ladies send me a little piece of paper I take to the post office, I get the money. So now I buy spaghetti. 
What are you going to do with all this spaghetti? I bring it to PTA meeting. Oh, you're still going to the meeting, eh? Sure. I buy suit, I prepare speech, and now I bring the spaghetti. That's a fine, Luigi. Look, here. I give you a couple of hundred of cards for my restaurant. You give it to all of the ladies. I'm a speaker, not a spaghetti salesman. Well, when you speak, you talk about this. My speech is about education. <laughs> my spaghetti is a very educational, Luigi. But I don't know about spaghetti. I don't even know why they call a spaghetti spaghetti. That's a foolish. Is a long like a spaghetti, taste like a spaghetti. That's why they call it a spaghetti. <laughs> I don't think I do this, Pasquale. I give you ten yards extra, just in case the spaghetti shrinks. <laughs> Excuse me, is Mr. Basco in? What's the matter? Jimmy, you don't recognize me? A cutaway. Is that you, Mr. Luigi? Sure. Look like a movie star, huh? Where you going? To PTA meeting, Jimmy. No! Yes, and I bring them spaghetti and I make a long speech. You and Miss Pauling will be so proud of me, you won't know what to do. Oh, I'm late. Goodbye, Jimmy. I know what I'm going to do. Join the Foreign Legion. Hello? Miss Balling, please. It's important. Mamma mia. Miss Balling, this is Jimmy O'Connor. It's worse than I thought. He's all dressed up like a pallbearer, and he's going to make a speech that's full of statistics, and, and he's bringing a pot of spaghetti. <laughs> Miss Balding? Miss Balding! <laughs> Really, I think this is wonderful this afternoon. <laughs> oh, Miss Spaulding, this is quite an audience. It looks like the finest PTA meeting we've ever had. What was that, Mrs. Pringle? Yes, I said that it looks oh, like yes, the finest. Oh, yes, it does. Good afternoon, Dr. Cartwright. Well, it's nice seeing you again, Mrs. Pringle. I look forward to hearing you speak. Oh, uh, Dr. Cartwright. Yes, Mrs. Wilson? There's a man in a cutaway coat outside with a big pot of spaghetti. Uh, <clears throat> well, it must be a waiter who's made a mistake. Certainly no one here has ordered Hello. It. You're Dr. Cartwright, the principal, huh? I am, but I didn't order any food. I bring it. This is my present for PTA meeting. Here. Ouch! Excuse ha! me. I put it on the table. <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't know me. I'm Luigi Bosco. Do you have a child in this school? Sure. My boy, Jimmy O'Connor, he's a pupil here. Mm, so that's why you came. Also because Miss Spaulding invited me to make a speech. Miss Spaulding did what? Miss Spaulding? Yes, Dr. Cartwright. Did you invite Mr. Basco? Hello, my teacher, Miss Spaulding. Hello, Mr. Luigi. Miss Spaulding, I prepare a short speech. Uh, well, Mr. Basco, I'm afraid there won't be any time for your speech. That's all right. I wait. <laughs> the meeting will come to order. Will the ladies please find seats? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I must ask you to sit down. I promised Pasquale I give out his cards. Is his spaghetti? Mr. Luigi, how could you? Is all the people here live in the same neighborhood? Or maybe they give Pasquale a little business. Is something wrong, Miss Paul? No, no, everything's just fine. That's the way I feel it, too. I shall turn the chair over to our good friend, your chairman, Mrs. Wilson. If he turn over chair, she fall down. <laughs> good afternoon, ladies. Me, too. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, now, before we proceed, is there any old business? I have all the business. Antiques. <laughs> uh, our first speaker is Mrs. Nelson Pringle. She will speak on um, our school system. <laughs> Spaghetti is getting cold. We must have order. <clears throat> A great many of you may not like what I have to say, particularly about this school. As you know, my son is a pupil here, and I must say, from personal observation, I should think that our teachers here must recognize the need for greater discipline. If there is rowdyism, and we know there is, if our children find their excitement in the streets, then I think our teachers are at fault. And I suppose... Please, I'd like you to say something. We don't matter all I had the floor. We must have orders. Mr. Basco, please go quietly and quickly. First I speak, then I go. That's the person who brought the spaghetti. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, ladies are right. I bring a spaghetti. Is because I think maybe you like. I make a mistake. I don't do this again. Excuse me. 
But it's not important now anyway. It's important what the ladies say about teachers. I'm only in this country a little while, and I don't know about schools like ladies. Also, only teacher I know is Miss Spalding. And it's not her fault when the kids fight. Maybe it's the parent's fault, not teachers, when the kids fight too much. If my Jimmy come home with a black eye, that's my fault. I don't teach Jimmy right, but I try. I tell him this is a wonderful country because all kinds of people here and children of all kinds of people. Little children, they don't know what it means to hate, to hurt. They learn about this from us, not from a teacher. All little children know is love. So it's up to us older people to show them. It's like old saying, apple don't fall far from tree. We show them at home, we explain, then they know. That's why. If it's bad, the children is not teachers' fault. It's sometimes parents' fault. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Miss Luigi. Gee, you didn't stay long. I think maybe too long. Did you make your speech? No. You're a smart boy, Jimmy. You know what was going to happen at the PTA meeting, huh? No, boss, I... Was it really bad? It was worse than that, Jimmy. I make a bigger fool... Hello, Luigi. Hello, Miss Spaulding. I'm sorry, I... I make you so ashamed. Ashamed? You were wonderful. Your speech was inspiring. But I think I look so foolish in this suit. Well, it was a little too formal. Boss, I'm proud of you. I'm glad, Jimmy. And you know something? I was the only mother in a cutaway coat. <laughs> So, dear Mamma Mia, I am now a member of Parent Teachers Association. From now on, I go to all the meetings. Who can tell? Maybe next year, I become a president. Then I'll be first the president of a woman's club. <laughs> also, Mamma Mia, I sell my cutaway coat to Pasquale. He is putting a suit in Rose's hope chest. <laughs> One more thing. Today, I am sending letter to men with the problem. How long does it take for Tom and Harry to dig a hole if they dig a hole together? I'm sending this letter to only men who knows the answer. John L. Lewis. <laughs> yes, your loving son, Louis. Be sure to listen next week at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to Mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by High Craft and Cy Howard and stars J. Carol Nash as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Music is under the direction of Wilbur Hatch. Ladies and gentlemen, the grand prize for solving the secret sentence on the fast-moving CBS quiz show Hit the Jackpot is now worth the staggering sum of $22,000. Contestants in the studio and at home will have a chance to compete on Hit the Jackpot. Tonight, Bill Cullen will give you more clues to the secret sentence. Hit the Jackpot a little later tonight on most of these same stations. Bob Lamont speaking for CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>